Hi, I'm just doing a quick video with my mobile just to show you an alternative method for calibrating your anamorphic. You know, that is to tune your anamorphic, effectively align your rear and front element. Now, there's a few tutorials already on this on the internet, but they suggest looking at a distance view at infinity and trying to tune it that way. And that's not practical for everyone. For example, I'm surrounded by houses. So if I try and point it out a window, I'm pointing at a neighbour's house and they're going to think I'm a peeping Tom and they're going to come around and batter my face in. Now, obviously, I love my face unbattered. So I want an alternative method where I could tune lenses and do it anytime, any weather and so on. So what I actually do is I get the camera, in this case, the GH5. I use a sharp taking lens, so in this case, an Olympus OM lens. I've then got the anamorphic I wanted to tune, which in this case is a Sancor 16C clone. And what I always do is I put on a front variable diopter on the front. Now, just for the sake of tuning, even if this was a bigger scope, I could just put a step down and, and use this anyway. I don't have to put the full size rectilux on there just for this, because I can just look at the center of the image. So it's, it's really up to you. But I prefer to work this way, because I can see the whole end to end. And I know that once it's showing a correct image on here, that this is definitely aligned. And we'll, we'll go and have a look at that now. So what I do is I put all the screws in first. And I'm just going to stop the camera going to sleep. Um, so all the screws are in, but they're not tight. So this allows me to uh, move the alignment. I'm going to see how that looks. Now, one of the nice features of the GH5, and this is really what you want for this, is a camera with a similar feature to this is you can punch in and actually have a look at an image. So here I'm zooming in on the display of a CD player. And I quite like to use um, text to look at. And the uh, LCD display is quite good because you can see you've got light coming out of it. It helps to have a look at the uh, bokeh. They kind of blur as you go out of focus. So here we can see that actually is uh, sharp at the moment. And this is this is at F4 and that's at F2.8 where you get a little more, you get a little bit of bloom, but it's... Uh, it's, it's still a usable image. Now, what I'm going to do, and we'll take that back to F4 though, because what we're concentrating on at the moment is getting the alignment right. Now, as, as I focus at the moment, because the screws are loose, it's going to, it's going to go out of alignment anyway. And I'm just going to actually hold the front of the anamorphic and, and wobble it so you can see just the difference, just the slightest movement there. And you should see there the difference in the quality of the image and how sharp it is. And that's the issue with is that either in the factory they're not they weren't quite aligned right in the first place, or that over time they've become loose and um, obviously it's an issue there for you to deal with. So we're going to look at doing that. So the first thing you would do is obviously once you get the setup done, is you would turn it left or right until it is sharp, so you know which direction it needs to go. Um, what I actually do is I hold it with uh, one hand, and then I'll bring in the screwdriver. And I'll actually just fasten in one of the screws once I'm happy with the alignment. And then I'm good to go. I can let go of it, play about with it. And it's not going to move for that time being. And then what you can do is if put the other screws in tight. If you're really concerned about them coming loose over time, put some thread lock on them. Thread lock will come off. It's not permanent, but it will stop the screws from coming loose. So that's the approach. And just to show you one other thing, though, don't just look at how sharp the image is. Actually take it, actually turn your focus wheel both ways and look at it. Because if it's not entirely aligned... You'll, you'll see it in your bokeh and that it won't be vertical. So I can, I'll can skew it here and you can you can see the effect of what I mean. So make sure that that's vertical. And look at it in both directions because sometimes it can look worse. I mean, th this looks more dramatic and awful. Uh, so it's better guidance than if I turn the focus wheel that way. So turn your focus wheel both ways and then you can get a better idea. So I'm going to use that as well as looking at it. So I'll look at it first so it's sharp. I'll fasten it into place, but... Before I actually put all this back together, I will actually look at the out of focus areas as well and just make sure that looks all right, just to give me the confidence that I've got it right. So here we go, take this out of focus and that blur should remain vertical. And we should see the oval shape we're familiar with, which we do. So there you go. That's just another approach to doing this. That means you can stay inside where it's nice and warm. Bonus. Cheers.